The title of today's study is New Organization versus the Foundation of Adventists. New Organization versus Foundation of Adventists. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered the woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to subdue my servant to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So now we know that Revelation says, I have a few things against you, because you allow who? Jezebel. And the Jezebel in the last days represent PPC. Notice another quotation. Notice Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against thee because thou has there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Before we talk about the foundation of Adventists, we're going to go through quotations from Spirit of Prophecy and the Bible, or Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy, we're going to find out whether the Conference Church is the new organization according to the Word of God, or those we stand, we stand on the foundation of Adventists. Because, I mean, it seems like it's like a three groups. Because there are some people that they think they are Seventh-day Adventists. They don't belong to conference. But unfortunate. They're not on the original faith that Ellen G.Y. says. And that's another group. Our chart, our pioneer chart. We're going to find out the new organization. We're going to find out the one that is going to heaven and the one that is now going to heaven. So let's find out. Because we don't want to be deceived. We live in the last days. This is coming from Selective Messages, Volume 1. Page 204. This is famous quotation. Notice what Ellen G. Y. says. The enemy of soul has sought to bring in the superstition that a great reformation was to take place among seven day Adventists, and that this reformation will consist in giving up the doctrine which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. What this reformation to take place, what will be the result? The principle of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church will be discarded. Our religion will be changed. The fundamental principle that have sustained the work for the last 50 years will be accounted as error. A new organization will be established. Notice, books of new order will be written. A system of intellectual philosophy will be introduced. The founders of this system will go into the cities and to do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, will be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of new movement. The leaders, notice, the leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they would place their dependence of human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation will be built on the sand, and storm and tempest will sweep away their structure. So now we know the new organization, the conference churches. And when we talk about conference churches, a lot of people that don't understand. They think, well, we try to attack human beings or anything like that. No. Ellen G. White says our conference churches, they're going to go to apostasy. Or they're going to, I mean, they're going to take their feet from their own belief. Ellen G. White says in Selective Message, by in one page 204, Ellen G. White says new books will be written. They're going to write, they're going to write a lot of books that is not our faith. It's offshoot. All of them is coming from Rome, Jezebel, or Balaam, so to speak. Instead of them, they come to the foundation of Adventists, just like the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy says. A lot of them don't want to come to the foundation. They want milk message. Lukewarm, sleeping preachers are preaching to sleeping people. That's what Ellen G.Y. says. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1 to 2. Notice what the Bible says. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flowers and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. That's what Jeremiah said. There's a lot of pastors that they pretend like they're feeding Seventh-day Adventist people, the conference churches, for Rome in the last days, Babylon, the king of the north. Here, I mean, anytime when they go to any churches, take a leadership, and they would take holy things, and they would destroy. They would turn all the holy things, the service of God, or things that belongs to God's service, or for holy use, they would destroy it. So, uh, this is coming from Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 217, paragraph 2. Notice, the church has turned back from following Christ. A leader in a steady retreating toward Egypt. Yet few are alarmed or astonished at their want of spiritual power. That and even disbelief of the testimony of the Spirit of God is eleven our churches everywhere. Satan would have it us. Ministers who preach self instead of Christ would have it us. Their testimony are unread and unappreciated. God has spoken to you. Light has been shining from his word and from the testimonies, and both has been slighted and disregarded. The result is apparent in the lack of purity and devotion and earnest faith among us. When the testimony is unread, when the God's people come to the last days and they refuse to read the spirit of prophecy, the Bible says in the Proverbs, where there's no vision, the people perish. That's what a lot of seven day Adventists they perish because they are new organization, unfortunate. They don't even preach that three inches message anymore. And they don't know anything about Habakkuk two tables. They don't know what constitutes seven day Adventist. They don't understand for you to call yourself seven day Adventist and, and not understand your own belief. That's so sad. Because they follow blind leaders. I mean, the word of God says, if a blind leads blind, they both will fall into a dish. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 2 to 10. Son of man, prophecy against the shepherd of Israel. Prophecy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be unto the shepherd of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought them which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they become meal to all the bees of the field which they were scattered. My shepherd wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And not this search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord of God. Surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became me to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for the flock. By the shepherd feed himself and feed not the flock. Therefore, O oh, ye shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flocks at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. God is not going to allow the sleeping preacher that Ellen G. Y. said, sleeping preachers are preaching to sleeping peoples. God is not going to allow synagogue of Satan to feed his flock anymore. That has come to the time that the foundation is it's built up, so to speak, for God's people in the last days because the mark of the beast is at hand. Sunday law is everywhere right now. They're not enforced. 
Some places, some countries, they already accept or they already enforce Sunday law. But we know according to uh, Bible and the spirit of prophecy, United States are the one that they're going to enforce Sunday law. And if they enforce Sunday law, it's going to be like democracy. It's going to spread the whole world. Around the world, this foundation is, is going to be everywhere. Praise the Lord. This is the fulfillment. That's what LNG White says is going to happen. Early writings, page 123 to 124. This is also is coming from LNG White. Notice what LNG White says. I saw that many of these shepherds had denied the past teaching of God. They have denied and rejected the glorious truth which they once zealously advocated and have covered themselves with mesmerism and all kinds of delusion. I saw that they were drunken with error and were leading on the flag to death. Many of these opposers of God's truth devised mischief in their heads upon their beds. And in the day they carry out their wicked devices to pull down the truth and to get something new to interest the people and divert their mind from the precious or important truth. Both Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy declare that they are false shepherds. They don't want to walk in the old path. They are shoe. They have taken their feet from their own shoe. Which means they have taken their feet from their own belief. They don't believe in the foundation of Adventists anymore. Praise the Lord. Now the foundation is going everywhere. Just like Ellen G. White said. So God's people has been fed. Those who come to the foundation of Adventists by the grace of God. They are fed. Amen. 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 Isaiah 28 verse 14 to 15. And again Isaiah 28 verse 14 to 15. Notice what the scripture says. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scorn shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lives our refuge. And on the falsehood have we Hide ourselves. Isn't that what this false shepherd is doing? Unfortunately, now, before you graduate from our own school, Seventh day Adventist school, the conference, church and the conference schools, because, because the Romans has taken leadership right now, and unfortunately, because they have taken a leadership, all the doctrine that is coming, even the spiritualism. I mean, it's so sad that the spiritualism is living now in the Seventh day Adventist. The new organization. Now those we are on the foundation of Adventists. If you really want to stay out from all the false teachings that the Rome is doing this last day, the best thing for you to do is to come to the foundation of Adventists. Otherwise you're going to be lost. A lot of people, they don't want to come because they, they love false shepherd so much. The time has come that everybody has to eat the word of God for himself. Because you're going to stand for yourself. When the test comes like a Sunday law, Ellen G. White says sometimes you can stand like there's no any other. There's nobody that is living this earth. You're going to be alone. Just like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Elijah, all of them. So you got to eat the word of God for yourself because nobody's going to come to the court and defend you. Because Romans are so cruel. And when I talk about Romans, I'm not talking about some of the members that are deceived in the Roman church. When I talk about Romans, I'm talking about the papacy, the leaders that knows that they're doing the evil work, that they're deceiving the people and taking the people to hell. These are the people that I'm talking about. Those who know the truth, but they choose to feed themselves. They will study the word of God for themselves and not to live by the word of God. And not to spread the truth to save, to help others to go to heaven. That's what the Rome is doing right now, them Jesuits. That's why now they're in our conference churches and the conference schools. Everywhere you go, false doctrine. A lot of people don't even know this chart. This is the old chart, the pioneer chart. We're going to read the inspiration. You're going to find out it's the pioneer faith. There are many people that don't believe in our faith no more. Because the Bible said in the last days, each in the years, they want smooth things. 
prophesy unto us smooth things, doctrines that will make us sleep to death and get the mark of the beast Sunday long that is coming. First, notice what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18. The story continues. Notice. Remember, we just read from Isaiah 28, verse 14 and 15. Now we're going to, in the same chapter, Isaiah 28. But right now, we're going to read from verse 18. Notice. And your covenant with dead shall be disnewed, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scorn shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Amen. All this boasting and proud that all the time, those people, those leaders that are false messengers or that are in our conferences, that are pushing Rome, the Vatican Roman teachings that are destroying the foundation of Adventists. They don't want our people to know our belief. Sometimes you know, they, they will boast and they will say, hey, all the bad things that is coming is not going to fall on us. Be safe. They're deceiving themselves. Jesus Christ said, don't deceive yourself. When the Sunday law comes, I mean, you're going to get the Sunday law, the mark of the beast. Because you can't stand. You can't stand alone unless you have the Spirit of God. The conference church, they use Freemason New World Order. They use the sixth frame. You're going to see that it has a three frame on this side. It goes like, you know, like a triangle this way. This is what it is. It's like this. Triangle, they have the you know, Bible underneath, try to deceive people. But this is how it goes, and I'm gonna put it on the screen. It's it's a Roman frame, and that's why they have a six frame, not the seven, because Rome worship number six. Even the cross is upside down, and I'm gonna put all of them on the screen for you. They're not using our pioneers chart, and they don't use the three inches logo because they don't want to preach the three inches message. Ellen G. White says in Testimonies for the Church, volume now, we are watchmen in these last days. We are the only church that is one in the whole world. Ellen G. White told us to spread the three inches message and now allow anything on this world to observe our attention. And now they know that if, we, if our people preach a three inches message, they're going to come to the foundation, they're going to know the logo, and they're going to know the sixth frame, the Vatican papacy. Roman logo. Everything that we have, they try to remove. That's a new organization. David, the logo itself will tell you that it's a new organization. The one who created that logo is Roman Jesuit. They try to claim that the logo, the upside down cross that is, is underneath, they're going to overcome Seventh day Adventists. They're going to overcome new organization. They don't have our belief anymore because they are offshoot. But praise the Lord. Now those who are on the foundation of Adventists, can you fight against Jesus Christ, the one who led his people, the made not cry, that is living the loud cry, the third in this message, 144,000 in these last days. So now we're going to talk about the foundation of Adventists. Now we're going to find out the true foundation. The faith which was once and for all was delivered to the saint that the Bible says. Let me give you a little key to understand the Bible so that the devil don't deceive you and make you think that the Bible was written for Jewish or some people and now for you. Notice. Notice what Ellen G. Y. says. Selective message, volume 3, page 338. Each of the ancient prophets spoke less for their own time than for ours, so that their prophecy is enforced for us. Now all this thing happened unto them for an examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. First Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Notice this is coming from Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7. I have set a watchman upon thy wall. O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace day or night. 
Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep no silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem praise in the earth. Amen. So God's watchmen in the last days, those we on this foundation, those we building the foundation of many generations, that Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 says, we're not going to keep silence until God has made Jerusalem praise in the earth. Who is Jerusalem? Spiritual Jewish. Spiritual Israelite. Amen. Amen. God is going to use us to feed his people no matter what. You can attack this message. Whenever you see this foundation, this is not a scattering. This is a gathering. According to Isaiah chapter 11, God is gathering his people right now. Many people are coming out from the false doctrine that is blowing, the foolish wind of doctrine that is blowing Adventism. And now, conference churches, new organization. This is coming from Manuscript Releases, volume 21, page 437. Notice what Ellen G. White says. All oh, the message given from 1840 and 1844 are to be made forcible now, for there are many people who have lost their bearings. The message ought to go to all the churches. Amen. Amen. Ellen G. White is talking about the foundation, the message that was given 1840 to 1844, and in GY says, our message have to go to all the Seventh-day Adventist churches in this gathering time or these last days. Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 87, paragraph 4. I want you to catch this, notice. It has been shown me that our kind meetings are to increase in interest and success as we approach nearer the end. I have seen that in this meeting there will be less preaching and more Bible study. There will be little group all over the ground with their Bible in their hands and different ones leading out in a free conversation study of scriptures. Amen? Amen. Amazing. Isn't that what is going on now? Amazing, my brother. My brothers and sisters, this child is going around the world. It's like a tidal wave. It's like a wildfire. 1 BIO page 180 paragraph 3. Notice what Ellen G. White says. Those who claim to be advantage, to be constant, acknowledge the means that God in his mercy has employed to bring them to the light of the advent truth and which has made them what they are. No one would deny the fact that it was the proclamation of the time, 1843, as it was written on the chart that arose the Adventist people to look for the Lord. Amen. Ellen G. White is talking about this chart. Even Ellen G. White says our pioneers, every seven-day Adventist, everybody's supposed to constantly look or search to know the foundation. Our pioneers believe, but a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't even know this chart right here. 1843, 1843 chart. Many people don't know 1843. The Ellen G. White says in 1BIO page 180 paragraph 3, and even 1850 chart that was published by Brother Nichols. A lot of people don't know. There is a lot of Seventh-day Adventists that they also say they don't belong to the conference churches, but unfortunately, they fight against the foundation of Adventists, our pioneer true and the pioneer chart. Notice what Ellen G. Y. said. And some of them, they try to hold 1863. And notice, this is coming from Manuscript releases volume 5, page 203, paragraph 1. Notice what Ellen G. White says about these charts, special 1850. All of them Ellen G. White talks about it. Manuscript releases volume 5, page 203, paragraph 1. On our return to Brother Nichols, the Lord gave me a vision and showed me that the truth must be made plain upon tables, and it will cause many to decide for the truth by the third angel's message, will the two former be made plain upon tables? I also saw it was necessary for the paper to be published as for the messengers to go. For the messengers need a paper to carry with them containing present truth 
to put in the hands of those who heard, and then the truth will not fade from the mind, and that the paper will go where the messengers could not go. Other thing I saw, which will appear in the paper, and in GY says, Laymen will finish the work. Amen. The first English message began 1840, and the second English message 1842, when the Protestants began to close their doors, Sunday churches. When they came to the United States, they are forefathers. So the first and second English message is on this chart, 1843 chart or 1843, and then the third English message is on 1850 chart. That's why you see the sanctuary. That's why you see 1844 right here. If you claim that you are Seventh-day Adventist, you better come to the original faith that Ellen G. White talks about it and the Bible talks about it. Whenever you get time, read Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Ellen G. White talks about this chart right here. She referred to Habakkuk 2 tables in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Manuscript releases, volume 13, page 351, paragraph 1. I saw that God was in the publishment of the child by Brother Nickers. Right here, put the camera right here, my brother. Notice. By all this nickel of Brother Nicker. Right here. I'm going to read it one more time. And then you are coming on this. Are you going to fight against? Are you going to fight against your own truth? The pioneers, the old path, the foundation of Adventists? If you don't have a foundation, you don't have a burden. I didn't finish. Notice. Manuscript releases by 13, page 351, paragraph 1. I'm going to start it one more time. I saw that God was in the publishment of the chart by Brother Nichols, talking about 1850. Notice she continued. I saw that there was prophecy of this chart in the Bible, talking about Habakkuk, two tables. Let's continue. And if this chart is designed for God's people, if it is sufficient for one, it is for another. And if one need a new chart, Pain on the large scale, all needed just as much. And a lot of people, they will say, well, no, we don't believe in this child that God endorsed. They want to believe that child that one of our pioneers make mistake. Ellen G. White won James White, 1850, and unfortunately, 13 years later, 1863, he published 1863 child without even explanation. Because God never told him to do that. God never commanded him. He did it on his own. Let me read it for you. Are you ready? Yeah. This is coming from 1 BIO, page 181, paragraph 7. Notice. The Lord showed me some weeks ago that as James will begin to publish what the leaders has written in 1844 upon the truth, Satan will hinder us. But we must struggle for the victory and go on. Let's continue. 1 BIO, page 180, paragraph 5. Listen. What? She says. What? Shall we rejoice in the blessed hope and then turn around and curse the means that heaven has employed to bring us to its light and glory? God forbid it. Such a curse. Such a position is not only inconsistent in the extreme, but blasphemous. We believe in James White, amen? amen. All his writing, excellent, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But just like William Miller, we believe in William Miller, amen? But William Miller make mistake too. Amen. Just like James White, he make mistake. But the Bible or spirit of prophecy cannot be mistaken or cannot make mistake. So it's true, but a human being can make mistake because Bible or spirit of prophecy is the word of God. Can Jesus Christ make mistake? The champion of truth? Oh, you better believe him. So now let's read Isaiah chapter, Isaiah 62 verse 10 to 12. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stone. Lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say you to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, 
the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out a city now forsaken. God is telling the watchmen in these last days to go through, go through the gate. You have to enter every seven day Adventist churches, especially the conference churches, and proclaim the foundation of Adventists. Don't be lazy, watchmen. The word of God said the watchmen will never keep silence until God has made Jerusalem seven day Adventist spiritual Jewish praise on the earth. Ezekiel 34, verse 22, 30. And again, Ezekiel 34, verse 22 to 30. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall be no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. Amen. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make it with them a covenant with peace. And I will cause the evil bees to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. Talking about the latter rain, continue. Notice, there shall be a shower of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be saved in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, Neither shall the bees of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Neither bear the shame of the hidden anymore. Thou shalt they know that I, the Lord, their God, I am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. And ye my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. I am your God, says the Lord. So God already helped us to understand in this chapter, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 22 to 30, God is going to feed his people. Jesus Christ is not going to come from heaven. He always have his representative, amen? Amen. And he's going to use his people. He's going to use us by the grace of God. Praise the Lord for this great opportunity. He's going to use us to feed his people. Praise the Lord because this child is going around the world right now. Notice this is coming from Zechariah chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. We're talking about the foundation of Adventists, the gathering, the pure, holy, remnant, seven day Adventist church. That is going to heaven. Amen. Zechariah yeah. chapter 8 verse 2 to 3. Notice, that says the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. <laughs> that says the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, but the city of truth, my brother, this is the true, the city of true. So if you call yourself a seven-day Adventist, you better come to the foundation of Adventist. Jeremiah 6, 16 says you have to come to the foundation of Adventist. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 4, notice what Jesus says. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake will I not rest until thy righteousness go forth as brightness and thy salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all the kings of glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the lord and the royal diadem in the hand of god thou shalt no more be tempt forsaken Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah.
for the Lord delight in thee, and thy land shall be merry. One thing that hurts me the most is some of our Seventh-day Adventists that they believe that they're not on conference churches, but unfortunately, they've been deceived by papacy too. They've been deceived by Balaam and Jezebel papacy in these last days. Because they see that some of the papacy, they're fighting against this chart, and they are surface readers that the NGY says, surface readers anchor nowhere. They can dig deep the Bible and search the truth. The lazy Laodicea, just like their name says, Laodicea, lukewarm, be the lazy people. And in GY says, the Seventh-day Adventists in this last day, we're going to search the word of God just like William Miller searched. Our pioneer, the founder, the God used him to establish this truth, William Miller. And so if we're going to search the word of God just like he searched, William Miller talk about 25, 20. But there's a lot of people that they fight against seven times. If Ellen G. White says, this child is from God, why 677 is here? Are you going to fight against the chart that God order or command? If you come to even the bottom of the chart, 1850, you're going to find out the explanation of, of the time. And then seven times, that is above here, look right here, seven times, 677 BC. It's right here, the explanation, put the camera right here. Seven times is seven times 360 equal 25, 20 years. It's right here. Does God ever tell uh, James White to publish 1860 chart that a lot of people like, love to follow or like to follow human being? And now the scripture that says the Lord, when you see this chart, oh, you better love it and come to this chart. This is the chart that a lot of rain is sprinkling. When I heard that John Marcuson talk against this chart, they hurt me so bad. Why? Because I love Jerry Marcus. I remember when I was in New Jersey. I passed out a lot of National Sunday Law. I love Brother Marcus. But Ellen G. White says in early writings that those who fight against this chart, some of them will, be, will see the glory about this chart. I'm paraphrasing. And they're going to step back to the foundation of Adventists talking about this true foundation, this truth. Habakkuk two tables. Last day event page 209 and also 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Ellen G. White says some people that they're gonna see some something that they're gonna fight against because they are blindness. When they see the ladder rain is sprinkled, the mighty injury that Ellen G. White says in Revere and Herald, 1906, then when the tall building of New York came down that day, Ellen G. White said. Revelation 18 verse 1 to 3 will be fulfilled and then Ellen G. White says in last day event. Ellen G. White says, if I'm not mistaken, just like I says, page 209 and 210. Ellen G. White says, some people, they're going to see some light, they, they, they are blindness, they're going to they're gonna rise up to resist because they think it's dangerous. Why they say, should we not know the word of God? Should we not know the Holy Spirit? When we have been in the world for so many years, that's what Ellen G. White says. And it hurt me the most. A friend of mine, I never talked to him, but I used to order his, I mean, his National Sunday Law books. And I used to go to Philadelphia and pass them out. I love him, Brother Marcuson. But praise the Lord, my brother, brothers and sisters, please. I don't want to say anything against my brother, Brother Marcuson. But I'm praying that Jesus Christ will bring him back to this chart, this faith. The foundation of Adventists. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to 5. And again, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to 5. This is famous quotation in Adventist. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy raisin. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy sight. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. 
because the abundance of sea shall be converted unto thee. The voice of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. What's the meaning of sea in the Bible prophecy? People, multitude, nation, and tongue, just like Revelation 17, verse 15 says. Everywhere around the world, they're going to be converted, even the Muslims. Amen. Amen. The Sabians or Arabians, they're going to be converted. So now let's continue. This is the foundation. This is the foundation of Seventh-day Adventists or the foundation of Adventists that is going to heaven. This is the foundation that if you want to be among 144,000, you have to come to this foundation. We're not talking about false theory about Jehovah Witness 144,000. Do they keep Ten Commandments? No. We're talking about spiritual Israel or Seventh-day Adventists, those we on the foundation, those we keep Ten Commandments. Most of the churches, Sunday churches or Protestant or Babylon churches, they keep nine commandments, but unfortunately, I never see nine commandments in the Bible before. I always see ten commandments. So do not throw away the Sabbath and thinking that your son worship the honorable day of the son that Constantine changed the Sabbath. 321 AD, that was honored to be a son worship, the honorable day of the son will save you. That's a pagan son worship. This is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Notice what Moses says. This is the foundation. We see how Isaiah, all the prophets, they all talk about the last days. Oh, you better come to the foundation of Adventists. Otherwise, you're not going to understand the Bible. Notice, Moses says, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the word of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speed shall tester as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So Moses already had part to understand. He already told us that the latter rain, the last day, the latter rain that will come to God's people will begin just like sprinkling the little rain before the outpouring. It's going to come with the, I mean, without measure in the last days, which is Sunday law. But it's always come as a lot of, I mean, the little rain or shower. When we talk about September 11, 2001, just like Ellen G. White says in Revere Hero, 1906, Ellen G. White says that, you know, when the tall building comes down, Revelation 18, verse 1 to 3 will be fulfilled, John chapter 20. When Jesus Christ breathed, when he was going to heaven or when he was ascended to heaven, first he breathed on his disciple and he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So the latter rain or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, according to history, is always come up as a sprinkle or little rain before the shower or plentiful shower to be given on the day of Pentecost. Just like Ellen G. White says. All the prophet talks about last days, the foundation of Adventists. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has turned and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall ye know. If you follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto you as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. In Zephaniah chapter 8, verse 20 to 23. That says the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people, and the inhabitant of many cities, and the inhabitant of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. That says the Lord of hosts in those days, talking about Sunday, Lord, Lord, this is continuing. It shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold one of his language of nation even shall take hold of the skirt 
of him that is a Jewish, talking about spiritual Jewish or Seventh-day Adventist, spiritual Israel, saying, will we go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Multitude, nation, tongue, and people, including Islam, the children of the East. That is on the, that day on the chart, the Islam. The first world, second world, and the third world right here, Islam. Even Islam in this last day, they're going to come to us. Because it's going to be based on two things. Whether you're going to receive the mark of the beast, that is sun, worship, or S-U-N dash day. Or S-U-N day. Sun day. Even the spirit will tell you that it's a sun worship day, so to speak. Or you're going to come to the foundation of Adventists. This is the foundation of the Bible. The whole Bible, all the prophets. They talk about this foundation. You better come to this foundation. If you call yourself Seventh day Adventist, if not, there's only one thing left. You're going to receive the mark of the beast. Every book of the Bible, they all talk about last days. They all talk about Seventh day Adventist, the foundation of Adventists in these last days, the glorious truth. But unfortunately, many Seventh day Adventists have been hypnotized, hypnosis. But Jesuits, not from the Seventh day Adventists, but from Rome that they infiltrate our churches. <laughs> Many of them been hypnotized by them. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. Notice what the Word of God says. Behold, at that time, talking about Sunday law, one more time, I'm going to read it. When it says, at that time, it's talking about Sunday law. So let me read it one more time. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that hurt her, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. The glorious truth, but unfortunate. Sleeping preachers are preachers to sleeping people. Or Laodicea, lazy people, they don't like to search the word of God. They're not on the foundation. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 14 and 15, notice. That says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God, thou hidden thyself, O God of Israel, thy Savior. Wow! All the prophet. Amazing. You see, that's what the foundation of Adventism is all about. Just like God gave Ten Commandments to little Israel, God has given us also the same Ten Commandments, but more light. He has given us the two tables, Habakkuk, two tables. Just like the Ten Commandments, also is called two tables. Wow. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 to 10. Notice what Jeremiah said. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day. Talking about Sunday law, we continue. Says the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke, talking about papacy, the king of the north. That's a false king of the north. From off thy neck. Now I already explained it to you. I'm going to start one more time so that you can understand without explanation. Amen? Jeremiah 30, verse 7 to 10. When we go through that time of trouble, notice, Jeremiah says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, 
says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will bars that bound, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in, the, in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Or the prophet talks about spiritual Israel or seven day Adventists in these last days. Joel chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and order his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shethem, Egypt, shall be desolation and Edom shall be a desolate witness for the voices against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land but Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwells in Zion. Amen. Amen. God is going to cleanse our sinful blood in these last days. When he poured the ladder rain on us at the Sunday law, he's going to cleanse our spiritual blood. Do you think those we on the chart, the foundation of Adventists, do you think this is going to heaven? This is coming from Isaiah 45 verse 17. This is the last quote. This foundation is going to heaven. Notice. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded what without end. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. What is what without end? What without end is heavenly Jerusalem without end. That heavenly Jerusalem will never end. So this is going to heaven? So if it's going to heaven, just like the word of God said, why you don't want to come to this? Why God's people are sleeping this last days? Why they like milk message? Why they like sleeping preachers that are in the conference churches and the conference schools that are giving spiritualism and hypnosis and hematizing God's people in this last days? The third Elijah is coming from Seventh-day Adventists who give God's warning just like when the Jezebel, when he called God's people to commit fornication in ancient Israel or the Old Testament, God always sent Elijah to rebuke and give a straight testimony to his people. Now you heard Elijah's message, the foundation of Adventists, warning to reprove his people. Jesus Christ's hand is leading the Adventist movement. He's the one who led Adventist movement, the made not cry, and he's the one who's leading this foundation. His hand is controlling this foundation with the early writers. Jesus Christ is leading his people to Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is the champion of truth. You are what you wear. A lot of people don't like this title because it's true. Isaiah 16 verse 1 to 2, notice. Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. This is talking about Zion. It's talking about us. So God says, Arise and shine, but the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. The daughter of Babylon, Isaiah 47 says, they're going to uncover their ties. Means they're going to expose their ties. Prostitute. Prostitution dresses. 
Satan is using many men and women to promote sexual immoralities. Many dress like prostitutes, even to church. All oh, these Babylon churches, and unfortunately, sometimes when you visit conference churches, because Rome has been infiltrated, long nails, eyelashes, artificial hair, painting of faces like a Jezebel and Kings. Jezebel, she painted her face because Jezebel was trying to get Jehu. Prostitution. And now a lot of people dress all this sexual immorality, satanic Babylon dresses, and hip hop dress style. They take you to conference churches. When you go to the beach, oh God forbid, you better not go to the beach or visit beach. This modern Babylon time, if you go to the beach, man, you're gonna sin a lot. Half naked, almost naked men and women, as a child of God, you have to dress unique. Not like Babylon, not like pagan dress, demonic dresses. Some of them, some of the women, even the guys and, and women, not only women, some of the guys, they try to show their body, you know, underwear, and they try to prove to the world that they have a muscles. How are you going to uncover the, your tithe? Unless you demonic possess. Why? Because Revelation chapter 18 says, Babylon is fallen and it is fallen. And it's become the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. God doesn't want us to dress like a pagans. God doesn't want us to dress like Babylonians. God doesn't want us to dress like worldly people. God doesn't want us to dress like a prostitute and half naked men and women and almost naked. God doesn't want it. Your body is the temple of what? Chicken? No, praise the Lord. Your body is the temple of Holy Spirit. Your body is not the temple of demons. And if you don't put the dress reform right, Jesus Christ said, The word that I speak will judge him at the last days. All this gay and lesbian, all the president, some of them even says, they tell some of the countries, they say, Well, if you don't accept, you know, gay and lesbian, we're not going to support you. We're not going to help you. All the president, they all want. Rome are pushing this thing by small screen. They pretend like they talk against. By peace, the word of God says in Daniel chapter 8, it shall destroy many. All this Babylonian government, they the one they push all this pagan, satanic, half naked, prostitution, dress, and all them famous. And all these functions that they push in the world. Rome are pushing all these things because they want everybody to become like them. Because if you're in darkness, you can protest against them. All this darkness. And in GY says, if you want to know all the cruelty, or if you want to know all the bad history, we only have to look to the Rome. The great controversy. Rome has done more than every empire. Isaiah 28, verse 14 to 15. Isaiah says they have made covenant with death and, and they have made agreement with hell. And then Jesus Christ continues, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus Christ says, Your agreement with hell and death will, shall not stand. When the overflowing squad pass through, you shall be trodden down by it. So if they're pushing all the false doctrines, they also infiltrate all the Sunday churches. They have taken a leadership. They're the one they have become a pastors in all these Babylon churches. That's why they are the mother of the church in Revelation chapter 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Notice, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in mother's apparel, now with breeding her or gold or purse or costly array. You see a lot of people, they breed their hair. If you go to India and Brazil, sometimes they will take off all their, their hair for sacrifice for their idols, satanic pagan worship. And a lot of times, Roman papacy, the leaders, they will go to India and Brazil, those places that the pagan worship, they buy they, I mean, they heard they are pagan idol gods. They will buy those hairs. That's where mesh came from. And if all the satanic hairs that were sacrificed 
for their idols or pagan gods. Lowercase g-o-d gods, pagans, idols. If you add those herbs, what kind of spirit are you going to have? You're going to be demon possessed. And unfortunate, a lot of famous, they use all this, you know, fanciful, you know, pagan hairs, you know, mesh and all those things that a lot of them, they breathe. Bible talks about, we don't, Bible said we don't have to breathe our hair. So if you have all this prostitute, pagan, satanic, half naked, you know, almost naked men and women, Babylon dress, you're going to be doomed. You're not going to have the seal of God. This is coming from evangelism page 268 paragraph 2 notice one of the points upon which those newly come to the faith who need instruction is the subject of dress let a new convert be faithful therewith are they in vain in dress do they cherish pride of heart the adoratory of dress is the modern disease it must not be taken over to the new life in most cases submission to the gospel requirement would demand decided change in the dress amen that's what Alec G.Y. says this is coming from selective messages volume 3 page 242 paragraph 1 notice the dress and its arrangement upon the person is the general found to be the index of the man of the or the woman. Notice this is coming from Selective Message Volume 3, page 242, paragraph 2. Notice we judge of person's character by the style of the dress worn. A modest godly woman will dress modestly, a refined taste. A cultivated mind will be revealed in the choice of appropriate a third. The one who is simple and unpretending in her dress and in her manners shows that she understands the true woman is characterized by the moral work. How charming, how interesting is simplicity in dress, which in comeless can be compared with the flowers of the field. Testimonies for the church, volume 1, page 521, paragraph 2. As I, as I travel from place to place, I found that the reformed dress is not rightly represented, and I'm more to feel that something more definitely should be said, that there may be uniform action in this matter. This style of dress is unpopular and for this reason neatness and taste should be exercised by those who adopt it. I have spoken once upon this point yet some fail to follow the advice given. There should be uniformity as to the length of the reform dress among Sabbath keepers. Those who make themselves peculiar by adopting this dress should not think for a moment that is unnecessary to show other taste and neatness. It is a great injury to the dress reform to have person introduced into community a style which in every particular need reforming before it can rightly represent the reform dress. Wait sister till you can put the dress on right she says we have to exercise taste because the dress reform is unpopular the world don't like dress reform do you know what the world like the word babylonian pagan prostitution half naked or almost naked cut up short top dress and underwear and and all these pagan babylonian dresses so if we're going to put the dress reform on, the word of God and in GY say we have to make it clean, we have to exercise taste, neatness, but it has to be dress reform. Testimonies for the church, volume 1, page 521, paragraph 1, notice what that in GY says. In answer to the letters of inquiry from many sisters relating to the proper length of the reform dress, I will say that in our part of the state of Michigan, 
we have adopted the uniform length of about nine inches from the floor from the floor this is coming from first peter chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 and again first peter chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 who's adorning let it not be that outwardly adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold God don't want all of them gold bracelets and all this jewel he don't want he continue or of putting on of appear but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of the meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price amen, amen. amen. meek and quiet spirit that's what Jesus Christ want, but then you man or woman. And in GY says, when the ministers, when they don't dress right, they are dressing is preaching to the congregation. And then and in GY continue, she said, it's called strange fire. Remember Aaron's sons? Remember when they kindled the strange fire? They all got killed. So if you don't put the dress reform right, I see some people, they want to come and preach the foundation of Adventists. Some of the women, the bottom of the dress is dress reform. But a lot of times, the top, they're not putting the dress reform right. We don't want all these people. We don't want them. Amen? Yeah. I hope all our ministers, they're going to see this. We don't want everybody to come to our pulpit and dress like a Babylonian, pagan dress. Not on this foundation. If we see you dressing, I mean, half dress reform and half Babylonian dress, we don't need you. This is coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Notice, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God for your whole spirit and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God wants. The whole spirit, body, and soul to be present blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is coming from, this is coming from Evangelism page. Self-denying in dress is the part of our Christian duty. To dress plainly and abstain from display of jewelry and ornament of every kind is in keeping with our faith. Are we of the number who see the folly of worldlings in indulging in extravagant in dress as well as in the love of amusement? If so, we should be of that class who shun everything that gives session to this spirit which taking possessions of the mind and heart of those who live for this world only and who have no thought or, or cares for the next. If you don't wear dress reform, and in GY says, you, you, you are worldly, you like a pagan, you live for this world only. This is coming from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. Notice Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blame. Testimonies for the church, volume one. Not need fear that I have made dress reform one of my principal subjects as we travel from place to place. Those who have heard me upon this matter would have to act upon the light that has already been given. I have done my duty. I have borne my testimony. And those who have heard me and read that which I have written must now bear their responsibility of receiving or rejecting the light given. If they choose to venture to be forgetful hearers and not doers of the work, they run their own race and will be accountable to God for the court they pursue. I am clear. I shall urge none 
and condemn not. This is not the work assigned me. God knows his humble, willing, obedient children and will reward them according to their faithful. Performance of his will. Too many, the dress reform is too simple and humble to be adapted. This is coming from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 131, paragraph 2. And again, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 131, paragraph 2. Notice what she says. Why it is so hard to live a self-denial, humble life? Because professed Christians are not dead to the world. It is easy living after we are dead. But many are longing for the leeks and onion of Egypt. They have this position to dress and act as much like the world as possible and yet go to heaven. Set claims up some other way. They do not enter through the straight gate and narrow way. But the devil, his pain will be more. His representative is the papacy in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. So the mystery is working. And unfortunately a lot of people don't know the Antichrist. All the Sunday churches, they don't know the Antichrist. Even when you come to some of our conferences, Rome, the leaders that they have taken places in our conferences, that they have a Freemason six frame that a three goes this way and another three goes this way. They have a Bible underneath like a Freemason triangle. They change our logo, three inches make logo, and have up two tables. Some of them, they try to deceive some of our Seventh-day Adventists. So all these Babylonian pagan satanic dresses that is coming to our new organization, that LNG White says in Selective Message Volume 1, page 204. They don't have our belief anymore. They in darkness. They have forsaken the God of their youth. They're not on the foundation of Adventists. Even they don't understand the Bible. LNG White says those who sigh and cry will be the one that will have the seal of God on their forehead. If you visit every Seventh day Adventist, and if you don't see these two chart, Habakkuk two tables, don't go. If you don't see these tables hanging in our churches, better be careful what you're going to hear. Because you're not going to hear the foundation of Adventists. The reason why all this foolish wind of doctrines or false doctrine that is brewing Adventism right now, because a lot of people, they offshoot. They're not on the foundation of Adventists. Foolish wind of doctrine. That's why they always try to control the world. Because they don't want Seventh-day Adventists. They don't want our people spread a three inches message. They always like to spread, you know, Roman doctrine, doctrines of Balaam and Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2. False torch of prophecy, kindling from the hellish torch of Satan, just like Ellen G. Y. said. That's so sad. The title of today's study is Everlasting Gospel. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto nations and then shall the end come many times you heard people quote this verse Matthew 24 verse 14 and unfortunately anytime when they quote they would twist they don't understand that Isaiah 28 verse 10 says precept must be upon precept line upon line line upon line here little and there little so they don't understand the word of God. They don't understand the Bible. So they don't allow the Bible to interpret itself. So a lot of times they speculate. This verse is three angels messaging. This is what Jesus Christ says. If you don't believe it, let's go to another verse. That I want everybody to take note. Revelation 14 verse 6 to 7. And I saw another angel Flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongues, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. This verse takes you back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. We see the Sabbath. It's in this verse. The one who created heaven and the earth. 
Remember, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, God is the one who created heaven and the earth, and then God created heaven and the earth six days. And then the seventh day, the Sabbath, or Saturday, remember the Bible said, the Sabbath, you shall observe your Sabbath, evening to evening. Seventh day is the Sabbath. Morning and evening is the one day, up to the seventh day. First day of the week, second day of the week, up to the seventh day. So, the Sabbath always began Friday evening when the sun go down or sunset until Saturday evening, 24 hours, when the sun go down or sunset. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. This angel, we're going to find out that they are not the angels that are flying in the midst of heaven. Sometimes when the Bible talks about angels, Sometimes we represent angels or messengers. Because one of the characteristics of angels is messengers. So this angel says, Fear God and give glory to Him. The hour of His judgment is come. Wow. There's only one church that are preaching that the hour of His judgment is come. According to Revelation chapter 22, the Bible said Jesus Christ has his reward in his hand to give to every man according to his work. Judgment takes place before the reward. Amen? Amen. Because if you don't pass the test, how are you going to get your reward? There's a two kinds of judgment. Now the judgment is going on right now. And according to biblical history, 1844, the judgment began 1844 when Jesus Christ moved from the holy place, heavenly sanctuary, from the holy place to the most holy. So 1844, Jesus Christ went to the most holy according to Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Whenever you get time, read it. The seven days is the Sabbath, so it's a part of it. God rested. He set it aside for us. He make it a sign. He sanctified. He make it holy. He blessed the Sabbath. Wow. Have you ever heard many people says, well, yo, you have your own Sabbath. You can keep it. I can keep my own Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, nobody have his own Sabbath. If you have your own Sabbath, means you can create heaven and the earth. You're not God. So you better go back to the word of God. Amen? Amen. The biblical Sabbath. That's what God wants. God rested. He kept the Sabbath holy. He made it a sign. According to Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20. And also Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12. is a sign between you and I. Amen. So that you may know that I am the Lord that sanctify you. So the Sabbath is what Jesus Christ used to sanctify his people. The remnant church in the last days. How are you going to be sanctified if you don't keep the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Let's go to John chapter 14. John 14, 15 to 16. Notice. John 14. We're going to come back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 14. So put your finger on Revelation chapter 14. And now we go to John 14, verse 15 to 16. If you love me, keep my commandment. He didn't stop. Notice, he continued. Verse 16, he says, And I will pray ye the Father, and he will give you another comforter. If you continue to read this comforter, you're going to find out that it's talking about Holy Spirit. So if you don't keep God's commandment, how are you going to get the comforter or the Holy Spirit? You're not going to get it. So all this Babylon Sunday churches and all this Roman Catholicism, all these churches that they constitute Babylon, they said, no, we're not going to keep the Sabbath. Revelation 14 verse 8, notice. And there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen and is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornications. According to spirit of prophecy, the wine of her fornication is false doctrines that has made the whole world drunk. Everywhere you go, false doctrines. Because Rome, they are the one that they are pastors in all the Sunday Babylon churches. 
and unfortunately sometimes when you come to new organization that LNGY says in selective message volume 1 page 204 LNGY says our conference they are new organization that's why they don't have our logo that's why they don't know what constitutes Seventh-day Adventist that's why they're not on the foundation of Adventist or Adventism they have a Roman logo they have a six frame logo that a three frame goes this way it's like a triangle Freemason triangle three frame go this way another frame goes this way it's like this frame six frame and then they have a Bible underneath triangle Roman frames is six why it's not seven because Rome they worship number six so that's why they have six frame not seven seven is perfection number God always uses according to selective message volume 1 page 204 new books will be written that's what is going on you go to I um, mean conference schools and conference churches all this false doctrine spiritualism Roman doctrine that now they preaching they don't even know our message anymore. They don't preach a three inches message. They don't know anything about Habakkuk two tables right here. They don't understand. Now you're going to hear the three inches message. Now you're going to find that the three inches message is everlasting gospel. You're not going to find three inches message only in Revelation chapter 14. It's everywhere. I'm not going to have time to go through all the Bible. But for the sake of time, I'm going to show you some of the verses. The second inches message in Revelation 14 verse 8 says Babylon is fallen. It's fallen because she have made all nations drunk the wine of her fornications. That's why you see all the nations. Rome has been infiltrated every religion, every system. They are representative, are controlling the world right now. All the president in this world, whether it's Obama, everybody that you're going to name, whether it's in African countries, Europe, America, everywhere, all the president, they all go to Rome. They are schoolboys for papacy or Rome or Pope. Pope always tells them what to do. So that's why it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Now they have another name. They call it president. Whether they are kings or president, it's one word. Now let's do this. The third in this message, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 on onward. Notice it says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb, verse 11, and the smoke of the torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receive the mark of his name. This is talking about Sunday law. Because Rome, the papist, they say Sunday is their mark of authority. And all the false churches, the Babylon, they accept the Sunday that's why they are daughter of Babylon. They even uncover their ties. Fear God and give glory to Him. The first in this message in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. You better fear God and give glory to Him. It's the Sabbath. And also, it tells you to cover your skin, wear good clothes, the modesty, reform dress. You better eat right. You better do exercise. You better open your windows. If it's not winter time, you better speak right. You better be holy. Be ye holy. Because I'm holy. God says. So the third angel's message says, if anybody receives Sunday law, it's about worship. That's why when you go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, notice, Revelation 13 is all about worship. Some people think you're going to put a I mean, mark on your forehead and then they're going to put some mark on your hand. No, your hand represents your work. Your forehead is where you make your decision. That's why when you go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, it says, All who worship him whose name are now written in the book of life of the Lamb, slave from the foundation of the earth. 
It's all about worship in Revelation 13. But when you get down to Revelation 13 verse 11 and 12, it talks about United States, another beast that come out from the earth. Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation 13, all the beasts, they all came out from the water. The water in Revelation 17 verse 15 says, The water represented Shem, multitude, tongues, and the peoples means empire, worldwide, around the world. But United States, another beast that came out from the earth in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 and 12. This beast is going to cause the whole world to worship Sunday. That the Rome claim that is their mark of authority. So the third angel's message is warning everybody and said, whenever they force Sunday law in your country, do not receive it if you accept it. But when the Sunday law becomes a national law in your country, whenever they force Sunday law, it will become the mark of the beast. If you don't believe the God will send the ravens to feed Elijah, if you don't believe that God, Remember Isaiah 33 verse 16 it says, Bread shall be given him his waters, shall be sure. And again, Isaiah 33 verse 16 says, Bread shall be given him his waters, shall be sure. Talking about us, those who are not going to receive the mark of the beast, those who are not going to receive Sunday law. Whenever Sunday law is in force. And then GY say, if we don't want to receive the Sunday laws, we have to make decision now and say, Nay or no. I will not regard the institution of the beast. He said, I'm not going to regard Sunday law. I'm not going to accept it. You better make your decision now. This is the third angel's message. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world. It's a pure gospel. It didn't come from Rome. It came from the kingdom of God. Everlasting gospel. Many people quote Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, they twist it and they preach the wine, false doctrine, wine of Babylon that has made a lot of people drunk. So whenever you talk to them, many people, your message cannot go through. Why? Because they're drunk. Oh, I feel sorry for these people. If you're not drunk, you can understand me, but now you're drunk. Oh, you better pull the new wine to the new bottle. Jesus Christ said, if you put a new one to the old bottle, we'll bust it up, we'll destroy it. Revelation 18, verse 1 to 5, notice. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, and it is fallen, it's become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of her fornications and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchant of the earth has was rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Let's continue verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not partaker of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plague. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. A lot of people think this message is in the future. Don't let the devil deceive you. According to Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 11 to 14. Remember, Ellen G. White predict that the tall building in New York will come down. And then, there were some people that in her time, they will try to destroy her words. False witness. So Ellen G. White came back and defend her truth. So according to Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, Ellen G. White says, How come the word that I have declared that New York is to be swept away by a tidal wave? This I have never said. I have said, as I see top building going up there, story after story, what terrible sin would take place when the Lord will rise up to shake terrible the earth. Notice, and then she continues, she said, Then, Revelation 18, verse 1 to 3, will be fulfilled. Wow, amazing. If you're a student of prophecy, you better go back and read it. This is coming from Isaiah chapter 32, verse 14 to 15. Notice. Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, 
The fort and tower shall be for dance forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of frog, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. If you go to Manhattan right now, New York, if you visit the place that they have a World Trade Center, the tall buildings, they have built different towers. It was the little towers that they built around it. But the same place that the World Trade Center, the tall building used to be, they didn't build anything. So the towers would be dense forever. When you see the tower comes down, the spirit is about to pour on us without measure. Now it's sprinkling. Just like a legit white type spirit of prophecy, volume 3, I'm with John chapter 20. The day that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, the first thing that they did, he breathed upon the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And in G.Y. said, it was a few drops before the plentiful shower to be given on the day of Pentecost. This is coming from last day event, page 209. To there is to be in the seven day Adventist churches a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. But it will not move upon those who have now humbled themselves before the Lord and opened the door of the heart by confessing and repentance in the manifestation of that power which lightened the earth with the glory of God. They will see only something which in their blindness they will think dangerous, something which will arouse their fears. They will praise themselves to resist it. Because the Lord does not work according to their ideas and expectations. Why they say, should we not know the Spirit of God when we have been in the world for so many years? Isaiah chapter 30 verse 25 to 26, notice. And there shall be upon every high mountains and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter. When the towers fall, moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. In the day that the Lord shall bind it up the bridge of his people and heal the stroke of their wounds. Amen. 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 Wow! 2001, when the bridge, this chart began to spread the whole world, that's why God began to heal and bind up the wound and heal his people. Jeremiah 51, verse 6 to 9. Remember, Revelation 18, verse 4 says, Come out of her, my people. Now notice, Jeremiah is preaching the same message. Jeremiah is preaching Revelation 18. And again, Jeremiah 51, verse 6 to 9. Notice, Flee out of the maze of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not caught off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nation have drunken of her wine. Therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is certainly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bombs for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone into his own country. For her judgment reached unto heaven, talking about Revelation 18, and is lifted up even to the sky. Jeremiah is preaching Revelation 18. Remember Ellen G. White says, all the prophets in the Old Testament, everything that they wrote, Ellen G. White says, in Selective Message, Volume 3, Ellen G. White said, their prophecy is an enforce for us upon whom the ends of the world are come. And a lot of people don't understand the Bible, but when you come to this foundation, praise the Lord, you're going to understand the Bible. Amen? Amen. The foundation of Adventism. This is the two chart right here. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 20. Notice. Go ye forth for Babylon. Free ye from the Chaldeans. With a voice of singing. Declare ye. Tell this order it even to the end of the earth. Say ye. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Amen. 
Who is that Jacob? He's talking about spiritual Israelite. He's talking about seven day Adventist, spiritual Jewish, the last days. Those who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony or the faith of Jesus Christ. Isaiah, Jeremiah, they all preach the three angels' message. Even the loud cry. Revelation 18. Remember, three and one combination. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 14 to 15. Notice. Put yourself in array against Babylon. Run about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spend no arrow. For she had sinned against the Lord. Shout against her, run about. Talking about the loud cry, the third in this message. She has given her hand. Her foundation are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she has done do unto her. Revelation chapter 18. Jeremiah is preaching the same gospel in the last days. Revelation 18. Verse 6, notice, reward her even as she reward you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. That's what Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 14 and 15 says. We, I want you to catch this, notice, Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12. You see three in these messages. When you go to Revelation 18, you see another angel. So it's a three and one combination. When God sent a three angels message, and when God sent another one, three and one combination, then he gives his judgment. Throughout the Bible. But a lot of people don't understand. That's what it's called. Everlasting gospel. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 21. Notice. For thus says the Lord God, How much more when I send my four soul judgment upon Jerusalem? the sword, and the famine, and the noisome beast, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. The judgment will take place first in the house of God, and then the world. So for sword judgment. Amos chapter 1 verse 3, notice. That says the Lord, for three transgression of Damascus, and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have treasured Gilead with treasured instrument of iron. Ellen G. White said, this message go all the way to Eden. Amos chapter 1 verse 6. Remember we just read verse 3? But now, Amos chapter 1 verse 6, notice. That says the Lord, for three transgression of Gaza and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carry away captive the whole captivity to deliver them upon to Edom. I'm not going to finish the whole verse. Amos chapter 1 verse 11. That says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Amos chapter 2 verse 1. Notice, I'm not going to finish the whole verse. Whenever you get time, read through. That says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Let's go down a little bit. Amos chapter 2 verse 4. Notice, that says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, God's people, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. I'm Proclaim the three angels' message and let the world know that the Sunday law is the mark of the beast. Don't let anybody deceive you. Ellen G. Y. said the day they're going to pass Sunday law, Ellen G. Y. said we're going to go out and preach the Sabbath more fully. United States is going to fall Sunday law. Just like democracy. Remember United States, they brought democracy and the whole world received it. If you don't receive it, they're going to take you, they're going to set another president. If you're any president, they're going to say, well, you know, I don't believe in democracy. I'm, I want to be alone. I want to be single. I want to rule my own country. I don't want Pope to rule me or control me. They're going to pretend that you have a new weapons. They will take you and then they will set another president that will accept democracy so that they can control that president and fulfill New world order so that they can control the world. This is coming from early writings, page 63, paragraph 3. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy LNGY says. 
lot of Seventh-day Adventists don't want to read Spirit of Prophecy because Rome has been infiltrating the conference churches. That's why they don't want them to read Spirit of Prophecy because if they read the Spirit of Prophecy, their eyes will open. Remember Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, Proverbs says, Where there's no vision, the people perish. So if you don't have a vision, the Spirit of Prophecy, and in G.Y. says, talking about Revelation 3, and in G.Y. said, the eyesight is the word of God and make conscience smart. Spirit of prophecy will make you smart, will help you to understand the Bible. If you don't read the spirit of prophecy, just like I said, Proverbs 29 verse 18, well, there's no vision that people perish. So you're going to perish. Don't let any Jesuit or Romanism or Rome deceive you. Read the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy will help you to understand the Bible. They don't want you to know because you're going to be smart. Just like it says, early writings, page 63, paragraph 3. Notice, notice what Ellen G. White says, spirit of prophecy. Notice, if the chosen messengers of the Lord will wait for every obstacle to move out of their way, many will never go out to search for their scattered sheep. Satan will present many objections in order to keep them from duty, but they will have to go out by faith. Trusted in him who has called them to his work, and he will open the way before them as far as will be for their good and for his glory. Jesus, the great teacher and pardon, has nowhere to lay his head. His life was one of toil and sorrow and suffering. He then gave himself for us. Those who in Christ's stead beseech soul to be reconciled to God and who hope to reign with Christ in glory, must expect to be partaker of his sufferings here. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that go forth and weep it, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. Amen. Amen. You better have faith. Why? Let's go to Revelation chapter 14 one more time. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Those that keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus. If, if you don't have faith, you can't preach that three angels message. Because all the means will be cut off from God's people. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Matthew 13, verse 44. Notice, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hide in the field. There which when a man had found, he hid it, and for joy thereof go and sell all that he has and buy the field. Amen. Okay, you better sell all you have. You better put everything you have on the altar. You better go forth by faith, otherwise you can't stand. Are you lazy? Are you Laodicea? Are you sleeping Seventh-day Adventist? Are you stiff-necked? Are you drunkard SDA or Seventh-day Adventist? You better get out right now. The Lord of Rain is printed. You better go forth right now and proclaim the three angels' message and tell the whole world that the day that they're going to fall Sunday will be the mark of the beast. The Desire of Ages, page 668. And again, Desire of Ages, page 668, paragraph 1. What Ellen G. Y. says, the Lord is disappointed when his people place a low estimate upon themselves. He desires his chosen heritage to value themselves according to the price he has placed upon them. God wanted them as he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them. He had a use for them and he is well pleased when they make the very high estimate upon him that they may glorify his name. They may expect large things if they have faith in his promises. God will feed us. God will send even the ravens. If possible, he will send his angels to come. They will give us bread. Bread shall be given him. Isaiah 33 verse 16. His waters shall be sure. If you don't have faith, how can you stand? Do you know what's coming? Sunday law, Ellen G. White said, compare the Ephesus church or the apostle time with Protestant. This is going to be worse than all of them combined together. 
But Jesus Christ says, the time of trouble such as never was. Christian service page 239, paragraph 3. Notice what Ellen G. White says. The servant of God must express every kind of discouragement. They will be tried not only by the anger, contempt, and cruelty of enemies, but by the endurance, inconsistency, lukewarmness, and treasure of their friends and helpers. Even some who seem to desire the work of God to prosper will yet weaken the hands of his servant by hearing, reporting, and have believed the slander, boast, and menaces of their adversaries and made great discouragement. Nehemiah may God his trust and here is our defense. A remembrance of what the Lord has done for us will prove a support in every danger. He does spare not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God be of us, who can be against us? However glad of Satan, his agent may be laid. God can detect them and bring them not all theirs. Early writings, page 49, paragraph 1. Early writings, page 49, paragraph 1. Notice what Ellen G. White said. As a view poor soul dying for want of the present truth, and some who profess to believe the truth were letting them die but withholding the necessary means to carry forward the work of God. The sight was too painful and I begged of the angel to remove from me. I saw that when the cause of God called for some of their property, like the young man who came to Jesus, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 22, they weren't always sorrowful that soon the overflowing scourge will pass over and sweep their possessions all over. And then it will be too late to sacrifice eternally goods and lay up the treasure in heaven. You better spend your money right now to save souls because your money is going to become a toilet paper pretty soon. Don't be selfish. If you're selfish, you're going to be doomed. That's the angel, and the G.Y. says, cut loose, cut loose. Otherwise, our possessions, our treasure, our money, they're going to come like a mountain. They're going to come and crush us in the last days. You have saved money for the last days. Remember James says it? You don't have faith? You better go out by faith right now. Spend your money. Otherwise, Rome is going to eat your money. This is coming from early writings, page 50, paragraph 3. Notice, and in G.Y. said, the mighty shaking has come and so will go on. And all will be shaken out who are not willing to take a bold and unyielding stand for the truth and to sacrifice for God and his cause. The angel said, think ye that any will be compared to sacrifice? No, no. It must be free will offering. It will take all to buy the field. Sunday law is waiting on your doors. Every country, everywhere you go, they're talking about Sunday law. Even the Pope said, Sunday is the bread for this world, these people in this world. That's what Pope says. The Sunday is the bread. No, it's not the bread. It's the false doctrine come from the bottomless pit of Satan. Don't receive Sunday law. Sunday is the final test for every mankind. This is serious. This is coming from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 19. And again, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 19. Notice, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventist has been set in the world as a watchman and librarian. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They has been given a work of solemn importance, the proclamation of the first second and the third angels messages there is no other work of so great importance they are to allow nothing else observe their attention this is coming from selective messages volume 2 page 107 paragraph 3 notice the message of revelation 14 proclaims that the hour of his judgment is come is given in the time of the end talking about our time and the angel of revelation 10 is represent as having one foot on the on the sea and another showing that the message will be carried to distant land Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 
Wherefore he said, Awake, that thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. You see the Sunday law, and some of the countries, they already signed Sunday law, a lot of countries. They are all waiting for United States, because they know that the day United States is going to sign Sunday law, it's going to be like democracy, it's going to spread the whole world. Today's Sunday Law News Report features an interesting news item that ought to make you sit up and pay close attention. Now, take a look at this. It's a massive encounter with the Pope. The family's coming from five continents for this special pilgrimage and some one-on-one -on -one time with the Bishop of Rome himself. This morning, the Pope is once again breaking from tradition. This time at an annual event for families, where 150,000 families from 70 countries join the Pope in Rome to profess their faith. We are the children. Now, for the first time, hundreds of children and elderly people are standing side by side with the Pope, instead of in the audience, emphasizing the importance of different generations. The Pope saying rest. Saturday, so many families are there. The Vatican City wants to be known as the capital of the family. The Pope says he'll close out the event, blessing all families around the world. What an event, huh? And quite an event. You know, it's really interesting. There was a report out this morning that says tourism in Rome has actually gone up no since kidding. this Pope yeah, arrived. His popularity wow. continues to rise. Amazing. Great to see you, Gio. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Who doesn't want a social day devoted to families? Who doesn't desire a day where the emphasis is on love for our family and everyone else's? It's a great idea in light of the current attack on traditional family values. But let's take a closer look at this, shall we? When we shine the light of the gospel onto this new satanic effort to recognize Sunday as the day of rest, we'll see that this is just the beginning of persecution for Sabbath keepers. The first world meeting of families took place in 1994 and subsequent annual meetings took place in Rio de Janeiro, Rome, Manila, uh, Milan, and again last year in Rome. The Pope has appointed the next Family Day meeting to be held in Philadelphia in 2015. Now friend, what does all this mean? What is this Family Day all about? The Pope desires that all families have a work-free Sunday. Families should be free from work so that on Sunday, children could be together with their parents and relatives and go to church as well. The Pope also suggests that we should discover the true meaning of Sunday observance on this family day. The good news of the family is a very important witness of evangelization, which Christians can communicate to everyone by being witnesses to life. True Christian families are recognized for their faithfulness, patience, openness to life, and their respect for the elderly. Pope Francis was speaking to participants of the 21st Plenary Assembly of the Pontifical Council for the Family. The Holy Father reminded the participants the family is based on marriage, which he called like a first sacrament of humanity. He said the church must give attention and show spiritual closeness to all families in need, those forced to leave their homelands, those that are broken, those who are homeless or without work, spouses suffering problems, including those who have separated. Now it's interesting that the UN and the Vatican are working together for this family day which will be each and every Sunday. Families will have a rest upon this day, be together with the children and go to church and so on. Do you see the strategy? The Pope desires to promote Sunday as the day of rest for all families throughout the world. He calls Sunday the family day. The previous Pope Benedict said, and I quote, by defending Sunday, one defends human freedom. Benedict said this during his weekly general audience in St. Peter's Square, just after he had attended a family day gathering in Milan, Italy. 
Pope also said, and I quote, Sunday must be a day of rest for everyone, so people can be free to be with their families and with God. The Pope clearly stated that he wanted to come to the defense of free time, which is threatened by a kind of bullying, he says, through the demands of work. He continued, Sunday is a day of the Lord and of a man, and of man a day which everyone must be able to be free, free for the family and free for God. This is in the Catholic News Service, June 20, 12. There it is, friend, straight from the beast himself. Friend, this is so crystal, crystal clear. The next step is the enforcement of a Sunday law. Everything else is now in place. Everyone else is on board and now only waiting for life to be breathed into the Sunday law. So when the Pope says that we should have Sunday as a day of rest for the family, he's promoting the counterfeit, unbiblical day of rest. Sunday means the S-U-N day and not the S-O-N day. The test lies before us whether we will worship Him who created heaven and earth and all that is in them, or we will worship the beast and receive its mark. This is dealing with worship, my friend. Whom will you worship and serve? Will you have God as your authority or will you have the Pope as your authority? Will you be loyal to the Creator or will you be loyal to people and their laws against God's law? This is a test that lies right before us. May the Holy Spirit help you and may God help you as you follow Him. When the book of Daniel are better understood, talking about the last days, on the gathering time, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 and onward, the gathering time, God is gathering His people according to Zephaniah chapter 2, gather yourself together. Everybody have to come to this foundation, but according to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 17, the safe next seven day Adventist people, those who in the conference churches and some of the independent churches, they said they're not going to come because they are off shoe. They have forsaken the God of their youth from the beginning. And then Jeremiah says, Hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 17. Remember verse 16. Jeremiah 6, 16 is telling them to come to the old path. But they said they're not going to come, the foundation of Adventists. And then verse 17, Jeremiah 6, 17 said, I also send a watchman over you, talking about seven-day Adventists, and said, hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Stiff next seven-day Adventists, those who are preparing themselves to receive the mark of the beast, Sunday, Lord, they said, they will not come, they will not hearken so sad if you don't have a foundation how are you going to have a building means you don't have a church or the foolish wind of doctrine will blow you away why because you're not built on the rock of ages you have no foundation nor the false doctrine is blowing a lot of seven day adventists they don't want to listen when you see all this chart is going around the world you better come back to the foundation of Adventists that Ellen G. White said, the message that was given in 1840 and 1844 are to be made possible now. For many people, they have lost their bearings. The message ought to go to all the churches. If you don't get in your church, you're going to get in maybe YouTube or Facebook or one of the websites. We have all kinds of websites. The message is going around the world. You better come back to the truth if you call yourself Seventh-day Adventists. You better get back to the foundation of Adventists, otherwise you'll get a mark of the beast.